Got something kind of interesting to show today. It's a semi-vintage Casio scientific calculator. Let's uh, take a look at it. This is a Casio model FX270W plus scientific calculator. Um, probably late 90s, early 2000s vintage. These are pretty neat calculators, these old W series calculators. They preceded the um, MS series of calculators and as you can see here th these were in kind of a transition period between Casio's 90's um, design language with a lot of bright colors and really small calculators that fit in your pocket really well and then the style they had in the mid 2000's when it was more rounded and buttons were a bit larger and stuff like that these were kind of a hybrid a transition between those two periods so they're really interesting design wise you can see these are the calculators that made mainstream the replay feature where you could see a formula you had entered after you had already executed it. The MS series of course improved on this. This one, these ones, you can only replay the very last calculation you made but the MS series keep the last five or so um, calculations in memory so you can scroll up through all the things you've done the last few times. So these are kind of cool calculators. I got this calculator from work, actually. At work we have a storage closet full of stationery and other things that anybody can come in and use if they need. Um, and that includes a number of calculators, mostly just basic calculators, but they had this one scientific one in there. So when I was at work the other day, I saw it there. I, I went in there to grab a pen and I saw the calculator and I'm like, wow, that's kind of cool. I've never I knew what it was and I've never used one so I was like yeah I'll, I'll take that and I grabbed it and I turned it on and I discovered an unfortunate problem it has the display is totally boned so what I'm gonna do in this video is uh, we're gonna open this thing up and I by the looks of it the display looks in perfect shape so my guess would be there's a lack of an electrical connection cutting out that middle section. So we're going to open this up and just see what, what it looks like. I'm not sure how it's constructed inside, but if it's some sort of ribbon cable going to the display, it might be a matter of taking a solder, soldering iron and just carefully running it across that ribbon cable to reform the connection between the cable and the display. But uh, let's open it up and see what it looks like inside. It's worth noting if you look at this calculator and if you're informed on the various calculators that Casio's made, you might see that these functions here, this looks sort of like uh, a Casio FX300, like a 300W or a 300MS. And indeed, all the 270 is, it's a 300 without a solar panel. Um, yeah, the 300 is, is solar powered in addition to a battery the 270 has just the battery so it is in fact functionally the same as a 300W. I found my old 300MS here and you can see the difference in style um, these came out around I think it was around 2003-2004 to replace the W series and you can see it's a bit more rounded the calculators physically a bit larger a bit more rounded buttons are a bit more rounded buttons are slightly larger and the dot matrix portion of the display uh, increased in size a bit as well and of course you can see the 300 has the uh, solar panel and the 270 doesn't and then of course the improved uh, replay feature but other than that these two calculators are functionally identical here's inside the thing uh, it takes a single button cell battery you can see there's actually space for two button cells in the molding but this thing only needs the one and uh, there's that ribbon cable that goes to the display it connects to the main board lots of little fragile connections and then where does the other end go I think the other end actually wraps around and maybe connects on the bottom um, you know what let me, let me put the battery back in put the battery back in and I will physically press on that cable if it turned on and we'll see if the display improves any yeah, I'm, I'm press oh ooh, ooh see that it, it's coming it wants to come back 
So that is the actual issue. It's actually the motherboard connection that's broke. It's hard to tell if it's the display connection or the motherboard connection. No, it might actually be the motherboard. I'm pressing on the, on the motherboard side of the connection. So I actually took all the guts out so I could try manipulating the other side of the ribbon cable and that didn't seem to help so it looks like it could be on the um, the circuit board side but take a look at this if I press on the uh, if I press on the the little you know integrated circuit there that's when it really starts coming back so I wonder if this could be a failure of the integrated circuit because that would contain the display driver as well actually it's not doing it now oh you know what it's when I do this, I'm pressing on it, but the board isn't flexing. If I do this, I'm allowing the board to flex. Look at that. So it looks like it, it, it could still be the ribbon cable. So I'm going to get out the soldering iron, and I'm just going to run it across these traces really carefully to see if I can reform the connections, assuming that's indeed what's wrong. Well, I tried the thing, and not only did it not work, it made the calculator ten times worse, so this thing's garbage. Oh well, um, it was worth a shot, and I remembered what I got the idea from. It was a YouTube video of someone who repaired a Game Boy display that way. The original Nintendo Game Boy sometimes have the display fail in such a way that lines start going missing from the display, and the fix is to if I remember right, I think it was a, was a soldering iron. Take a soldering iron and carefully run it across the uh, uh, display tracks to reform the connections. So that's what I tried on this. Um, it definitely did not work. Um, so this thing's garbage. Oh well. Some of you might be thinking, oh Trent, you took a piece of uh, employer property and then broke it. Well, no, it was already broken. The calculator was already useless in its present state. Um, it was already unusable, so really no more harm done. As a matter of fact, I could bring my 300 MS and uh, leave it there for other people to use because I don't use it anymore because I have a 991 MS now, and that's what I use. I haven't touched the 300 MS since I got that one, so I, I might just donate that to work in place of this thing, even though this was already broken. You know, being able to t take a look at one of these, uh, of a Casio calculator from this era is pretty cool. I like the design on it, and it's really cool to see. These are nice and small, smaller than the MS calculators that, uh, that succeeded them. And I kind of want to get myself a 991W which was of course the predecessor to the 991 MS but I go on eBay and there's two of them there two used 991 W's and they're going they're listed for ridiculous prices I think thirty or forty dollars for a used one when a brand new 991 MS is eighteen ninety nine at Walmart uh, Canadian and this was like thirty forty dollars American that I saw on eBay um, that was with shipping included um, so yeah, that's just ridiculous. But if I ever find a cheap 991W, I'd certainly like to to get it. I think it'd be pretty cool to have. I I very well could start using it as my main calculator. But there you go. There's a look at and a failed attempted repair of a Casio uh, FX 270W scientific calculator from 1999. Um, very cool calculator. Too bad that it's busted, but uh, these things happen sometimes. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you later.